I think the bigger challenges or bigger opportunities really is wrapped around the agricultural areas in Ireland, you know, and we, from there, we need to distinguish between the policy and the people. Uh, we need to have farmers in Ireland. We need more good farmers, but we are, we are going to have a need for less livestock. And what we need to do is figure out ways, but keeping farmers on farms, but just doing different things. And there's lots of opportunities there around the bioeconomy, around using our soil in very clever ways. So in many ways, Paddy, like when I think about the future and think about 2050, I think the air will be cleaner. I think we'll be less exposed to the volatility of energy prices. I think we'll have a healthier population. Hopefully we'll have a less burden of energy on healthiness within our hospitals. Hopefully we'll have more employment. We'll all know friends working in the energy industry because it's a normal thing to do and it becomes normalized. Hopefully we'll be producing more of our energy. Um, so in many ways, I think the future is, is very, it's very bright. It's a very, it's a very necessary future that we need. But it won't all be easy, you know, and as Paddy said, it starts when that when that politician knocks on your door, you know, whenever that will be. And they say, well, what's important to you? You know, is it, you know, the road getting fixed or or is it the or is it the the economy getting getting sorted out? And it starts with all of us just taking individual action, talking about the importance of energy, talking about the importance of climate and then moving it on from there. Well, now the question is going to be, what are you doing to reduce my energy costs? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is and, going to be yeah. a key question. Definitely. You know, if you look at the public surveys uh, going on at the moment, you know, in the Sunday newspapers, everyone is worried and rightly so about the price of energy. A typical family in Ireland spends about seven to eight thousand euros a year on energy. About half of that goes into our car, about a quarter into our electricity bill, another quarter into our heat. And unfortunately, if you look at the next two years, that's only going to rise. So we need to address that. If we look at like a lot of the major changes over the last century, that were really successful. They were successful because they were seamless, because they allowed people to carry on with an enhancement to what they were doing, but it seamlessly integrated into their lives. And I guess that's where we all come in, is that we're tasked with finding the solutions that sit in the background that actually change what goes on in the background. So from the customer point of view, from the user point of view, it's the same, it's the same or better. And I, this brings us on then to um, discussing the key obstacles. So what really needs to change from a, a policy, a planning perspective in terms of not just national policy, European policy, the whole way right down. Uh, so from European policy right down to, uh, to local communities, what are the key changes that are going to be critical to actually get us there? Yeah, well, a lot of the technologies that is, you know, the te technology changes that we've seen over the last couple of hundred years have worked as well because they were convenient. They were more convenient. When we look at the history of transitions, it's not just about cost. That convenience element is a huge, uh, uh, attractive part of it. So for retrofitting your home, it must be convenient. You know, these one-stop shops that are popping up now, they are a really good idea because they make it more convenient. But then wrapping around that is, I think access to finance is a big barrier, I think, for a lot of people. There's a huge enthusiasm and interest and in climate action and energy action at the moment. But a lot of people just don't have access to that cash. And as I said before, it's not just new technologies, it's new ways of thinking. So looking at clever financing, looking at property linked finance, for example, where you link the price of your retrofit, not to the person in the property, but to the lifetime of the property. So you're paying it back over, over hundred years, 120 years, the property is, or whoever is in the property, like we used to do in the old days with the, with the council house building. So I think making it convenient, making it easy for people and making it easy for people to access the financing is really, really fundamentally important. Now, then when you get all that figured out, I think we, we have a trades shortage in Ireland, having the hands to deliver the climate action that we want, the plumbers, electricians and carpentry. So climate action in the future isn't just about, you know, the scientists or the academics like me, be, it will be delivered by the carpenters, by the electricians. So we need more women and men in trades. That's fundamentally important. I think there are two big barriers that I would lay down there, Patty, just access of people to deliver it and then the convenience for people who want to access it are barriers that need to be overcome. 